All right, we are back. Um, it has been a while. I was on vacation for a week there, and then I got sick. Um, so sorry that the draft battles have been a little slower. Also, sorry if my voice still sounds a little gross. I'm just getting over it. Finally feel good enough to record something, so hopefully I'll be live today on Twitch. Anyways, shameless plug. We're going over the team uh, versus Patrick, uh, former roommate of mine. Um, on When I first looked at this matchup, I was like, oh, this is like the easiest Roaring Moon clap of my life, right? Like Terra Flying Roaring Moon kind of destroys their team, right? But on closer inspection, it's a little more awkward than I expected, right? Sandy Shocks, for one, is not something Roaring Moon can just Oko outright. And because they have their own booster energy mons, I have to be booster speed on my Roaring Moon. Which isn't ideal, but you know, it, it's something we can work around. On top of that, they have a pretty strong grass spam core, which if you look at our team, it isn't the best against, but like it could still chunk us, right? Like, especially if Ogre Pond gets that plus one attack boost. So it, it is something that I need to be mindful of, right? On top of that, Enamorous, a Pokemon that I like to joke is bad, is kind of a problem for my team. So, you know. Oh, and they also have Urshifu Single Strike, which just gets to ignore my Protect button or Detect or whatever, right? So, you know, they have a lot of threats. Like the, the first three, Urshifu Single Strike, Rillaboom, and Hearth Flame Ogre Pond is a really freaking scary core. So I don't think this is going to be as one-sided as I initially thought. I still think I have the advantage here, especially if they don't bring Gramble. If Gramble shows up, it's a little awkward because I don't... <laughs> Golden Go is like the only thing that can really deal with it right so anyways here's the team um i'm bringing something different this week specs golden go uh, i think this is the first time we've brought it all season um specs was necessary to pick up some ko i didn't write it down because i'm not a smart boy i think it was to oko a bulky iron jugulus i think with steel beam <laughs> i think it had to be steel beam if it was bulky jugulus so like that's not ideal to start with, but, you know, we'll figure it out, right? So, yep. Um, it's standard moveset. Uh, we outspeed Iron Jugulus in Tailwind, right? So the idea is I can lead Roaring Moon with Golden Go, set Tailwind, and Oko the Jugulus. Potentially, right? That doesn't work if they lead Fake Out. It doesn't work if certain things happen, right? So it's something to be mindful of. But yeah, that's kind of the idea. This is probably going to be like a, a game two or three mix up uh, lead, right? It'll probably stay in the back for game one would be my guess. So Specs does hit hard initially, right? Everybody's calcing probably for nasty plot sets that have to take turns to set up. Whereas this set will immediately be dishing out damage, right? So we have that going for us. And defensively, it lives a minus one... Ivy Cudgel from Hearth Flame, which means if they Terra, we need to hit them twice, I believe, with Intimidate slash Breaking Swipe. So something to be mindful of. And we also live a Adamant Black Glasses Sucker Punch without Terraing, which is pretty big, right? <laughs> like Urshfu's strong. So, but luckily we can intimidate that. We can't intimidate its other move, but we can intimidate Sucker Punch. So that is good. Next, we have Roaring Moon. Um, Roaring Moon hasn't done a whole lot offensively this season. I brought offensive sets, and they've gotten a few KOs here and there. But I think this is the week that Roaring Moon really shows its worth. Um, not that it hasn't, right? Like, the support sets I've brought every single week have put in so much work, right? Um, we are bringing another supportive set. But on top of that, we're also bringing Terrafly Acrobatics, right? Which threatens Oko's on four of their main core, right? Urshifu, Rillaboom, Hearth Flame, and I think with a helping hand, we Oko Enamorous. I could be wrong about that. That said, I think I might have gotten rid of helping hand. Oh, we have helping hand on Rotom. So I think we still threaten the Oko on Enamorous. Enamorous is pretty real. And when I mentioned Granbull, Granbull is what throws a wrench into this plan because we no longer pick up Okos if we get intimidated, which is something to be mindful of. Also, if there's a Grassy Seed, Whoever's holding the grassy seed will probably be able to live some hits, right? 
like I could see Grassy Seed, Rillaboom, or Urshifu being kind of a problem for this team. So we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's standard breaking swipe, acrobatics, tailwind. Uh ring taunt this week. I don't love protect. I if I can help it, I rarely run protect in competitive Pokemon, right? Because it's a passive turn, right? You don't always want to be stalling. You always want to be like pushing the offensive, right? That's not to say that Protect is a bad move. Protect is an amazing move, right? But especially against an Urshifu, right? It's not as good. That said, it's good for stalling on fake outs, aggressive terrain turns. So like it definitely would have a place on this team. But personally, I'm not a huge fan of running Protect. It's kind of like if I can't think of a fourth better move, Protect goes into that slot, right? Like on this team, I bet Sylveon's the only one that has protect. And I bet it's not even protect. I bet it's detect. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's in general, I try not to run protect, which, you know, hopefully nobody picked up on. <laughs> and now I have said it and they all know about it. So <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, this Roaring Moon's fast thing in the game. It's benchmarked for that speed stat, right? To outspeed everything. And then the rest is dumped into attack. And then after that, because we can't give any more attack or else we lose our speed boost, it's all dumped into health. So, and then we split the force. So yeah, uh, taunt us to shut down tailwinds, shut down swords dance on ogre pond. But like that said, like just acrobatics, the ogre pond, right? Um, stops calm minds on an amorous. Other random support tech here and there, right? The big one's tailwind on iron jugulus, right? Because we can't oko that, so. Yep. After this, we have Tauros, Salt Vest, pretty standard Tauros set that I've brought every single freaking week now. Um, I went back and forth on the moves. Like, this could be Raging Bull, but Wave Crash picked up an Oko. I don't remember what it was. I think it was on a bulky Sandy Shocks. I'm not sure. Anyways, but yeah, I went back and forth between that and Raging Bull. I went between Wild Charge to hit. Iron Jugulus, but Wave Crash hit it pretty hard, so we went Wave Crash. So, yeah, it wasn't so sure on the moves for this, right? But with an Intimidate and an Assault Vest, we tank hits from everything, right? Um, with a speed investment, we outspeed Modest Sandy Shocks. We can't outspeed Timid, so I went for Modest, right? And we live a Timid Sandy Shocks Thunderbolt, right? So, I think it was Timid Life Orb. Hmm, I need to double check that. But if we see booster energy, we know we live everything from it, right? So there's nothing to worry about. And Wave Crash and Aqua Jet picks up a lot of KOs, um, excluding the grass types, obviously. But yep. Uh, naturally lives Grassy Glides from Rillaboom at neutral, right? We don't need to intimidate Rillaboom to live the Grassy Glide, which is big. And we can Terra Blast fire it, which will 2 it KO the Rillaboom, right? And if they're reacting to my Terra Fire, right? They obviously haven't clicked high horsepower that turn. And high horsepower will come out the next turn, and we should live a grassy glide and no high horsepower for Terrifier. So yeah, Tauros is pretty solid, as per usual. It's a great Pokemon. I love Tauros. It's put in so much work this season. After this, we have Rotom. I don't think Rotom is coming again this week. I keep saying Rotom's going to be like the, <laughs> the bluff Pokemon, right? The Pokemon that doesn't actually show up. Um, it looks really good into this matchup, right? Like... It's a fire type, so it beats his two grass types. It's an electric type, so it beats Jugulus and an Amorous. It's a electric and a ground resist, or ground immunity, technically. So it beats Sandy Shocks, right? Like, on paper, Rotom looks amazing. So it's probably something that comes in game two or three. Um, or I keep it in the back game one, right? Based off of what they bring. Um, but Electroweb is a little awkward because of an Amorous potentially being contrary. Overheat is overheat so it can miss <laughs> uh, we have helping hand for support and stuff which is good um, but like I could see this being a really good lead potentially um, for game two or three I don't think I would bring a game one like I said but with covert cloak we'll be able to take the fake out and then throw off an electro web turn one to neuter some speed stats and stuff right this is kind of like I want to confirm that enamorous isn't contrary before I bring it type right that's what this Rotom is for also, that's why I'm not running Snarl on on uh, Roaring Moon, because I don't want to give the Enamorous a special attack boost, right? So I want to confirm that the Enamorous isn't contrary before this Rotom shows up, right? 
otherwise, you know, spamming Electra Web, which is a very good move, could be a problem. So this is where Helping Hand is on the team. <laughs> so we can't exactly Helping Hand the Roaring Moon. To be fair, Roaring Moon does outspeed a plus one in Amorous, right? So like we could give it a boost and then Roaring Moon could KO it next turn with a Helping Hand boost, but you know. Is what it is, right? Um, defensively, this Rotom lives a lot of stuff, which is, again, surprising, right? But we live a plus one adamant rock tomb from Ogre Pond, which is a strong move. It's the same role as superpower, right? So we'll live a plus one adamant superpower from Ogre Pond as well, which they probably need to run to have good coverage against my team. They could run play rough, but play rough won't hit the Rotom, right? So I think that third attack slot, right? If they run, it'll be a grass move, fire move, and then either coverage, right? So it'll either be play rough or it'll be superpower. And I think it needs to be superpower to hit Rotom, right? So otherwise you get walled out by Roaring Moon, right? So I think it I think it needs to be superpower. Or otherwise you get rolled, walled out by Rotom, right? So I think it needs to be superpower. I don't think they can afford to be play rough. That said, they could use other members of their team to deal with it. So it is whatever. Um we live on the special side, we live two sludge bombs from Enamorous because of the covert cloak. We don't have to worry about getting poisoned. You have to worry about crits, but you know. Yeah. Um and we outspeed Adamant Rillaboom with the speed investment. So Yep. T Bolt will Oko a no bulk enamorous, but like that doesn't cover for Terra. It also doesn't cover for them getting like some crazy contrary boosts. Yeah, if they're physical contrary, um, we die to two superpowers as well. So you need to be mindful of that. Uh, next, we have Sylveon. This is kind of going to be our late game breaker, probably. This is also probably going to be like a game two or three mon. I don't want to reveal this necessarily in game one. But we're Grassy Seed Pixelate. Um, Grassy Seed lets us get a defense boost from the Rillaboom's terrain, right? Um, which hopefully I want to do our best to mitigate their terrain turns, right? When we get to Mian Chao, you'll see how what I mean by that. But that's why I don't think the Sylveon will be the best, right? Because if we can get rid of that terrain early, then Grassy Seed's a useless item, right? So this is kind of like a game two or three Pokemon where we figure out how they want to play the game and then we adapt and say, okay, I'm cool with terrain going up because it'll mean my Sylveon can sweep late game, right? But we need to identify key markers of their team before we can bring this, right? Um, which I think is a really cool part of best of threes, right? Anyways, so we're Pixelate, Hyper Voice, Terra Blast, Calm Mind, Detect, Terra Fire. The same four moves you see me bring almost every single week on Sylveon, right? Um, both the Grassy Seed and Calm Minds we can basically become unkillable, especially if we Terra Fire. The only thing they have to hit Terra Fire super effectively is Earth Power from Sandy Shocks. And if we can identify that and KO it early, then Sylveon kind of just gets to run amok, right? Um, when we are fairy type, we wall out Urshifu, so we don't need to worry about it critting through us. And when we Terra, we are no longer a fairy type, so we do kind of need to worry about it critting through us. There's something to be mindful of. Um, but yeah, we're Detect, because Detect is better than Protect, even though it has less PP. Finally, we have Mian Xiao. Um, Mian Xiao's pretty standard stuff that we've been bringing every single week. Focus Sash, Inner Focus, um, CC, Ice Spinner, Fake Out, Quick Guard. Ice Spinner is that terrain mitigation tool that I talked about, right? If we can get that Ice Spinner off, then we are pretty set against the Grass Spam, right? Um, fake Out into Iron Jugulus. So the way that I'm picturing game one going, right, is we lead Mian Xiao, Roaring Moon. We click Fake Out into the Iron Jugulus. We click Tailwind with Roaring Moon. And then depending on how much damage the Iron Jugulus takes, right? We potentially have the option to Ice Spinner into it and Acrobatics it and get the KO if it's not as bulky. If it's bulky, then we'll have to commit a, ta a taunt to it, right? But this doesn't take into account Rillaboom potentially faking out our Roaring Moon, right? It doesn't take into account a lot of things. So there's things that I need to be mindful of. Um, Quick Guard lets us get past a Rillaboom fake out potentially. It gets lets us get past their Grassy Glide spam with uh, their two grass types. Sucker punches as well. So Quick Guard's really good tech. And then CC's just there for strong stab. I don't think I talked about the Sylveon's EVs, so I'll talk about that in a second. I'll talk about Mian Chao first. We're one point faster than Sandy Shocks, so we'll always outspeed Sandy Shocks unless they are that speed booster, 
which we want to identify early. Um, Spinneral 2 at KO, Sandy Shocks, and yeah, that's kind of what this investment does. So basically max speed, dump the rest into attack, and then bulk. Um, after that, we have Sylveon, or not after that, I guess, but back to Sylveon. Um, in Tailwind, we outspeed Ogre Pond. That's what the speed investment does. And we live a plus one wood hammer in terrain from both Ogre Pond and Rillaboom, right? Not that Rillaboom can get to plus one, but we live the plus one from Ogre Pond and Rillaboom's just teen, teeny tiny bit stronger. Um, and the rest is just dumped into special attack, right? So this is, like I said, this will probably come game two or three. So yeah, that's the team. And let's head into the battle. All right, we're back. <clears throat> this is battle six. Um, remember when I said in episode seven that hasn't come out yet that I'm doing these out of order? Turns out I'm doing these in the right order. <laughs> um, but anyways, we're going to go with the plan lead, right? Um, it's been a few days since I've looked at these calcs, um, <laughs> but you know what? I, I have a plan. I wrote down the plan and I think we're going to stick with the plan. Those are the six I expected, right? So feeling strong, feeling good. We need to scout for an Amorous's ability early if we can. Okay, Rillaboom and Sandy Shocks. Is it booster speed? See that booster speed? Okay, no booster energy on the Sandy Shocks. That's good enough. Um, I am just gonna trade fake outs and throw off a breaking swipe. I'm expecting a fake out into Roaring Moon, right? Or a U-turn. I think a U-turn is entirely fair. Um, if we can not burn our Roaring Moon's Terra immediately, that's also a good thing, right? Because it would be nice to stay a Dark Resist for Urshifu. And force it into a 50-50. Okay, cool. We're getting chip off into Sandy Shocks. That's brilliant. That's good chip too. I don't think that's ice spinner range. I'm gonna quickly calc that. And show into sandy shocks. Nice well sandy shocks. Okay. I spinner just 57 to 68 to no bulk. So that's probably breaking swipe range then. Or Roaring Moon, or Breaking Swipe plus Ice Spinner, so I will go for that. Sweet. Ooh, and that did nothing because it's minus one and the terrain's gone. Beautiful. And Ogre Pond comes out and it can't click the strong move. <laughs> Sash is still intact as well. So I will CC into the Ogre Pond. Hmm. Maybe I go into Tauros. No. I don't want to accidentally break Sash on a spiky shield, right? But I do want to get an Intimidate off. So I will go into Tauros and I will Terra fly. I will tail one. Tail one's better. Do some scouting. If a play rough comes out from Ogre Pond, that's fine. We've gotten the Intimidate off and we, well, is that fine? Hmm. I'm gonna CC into the Rillaboom, actually. And Terra flying into Ogre Pond. I think that's the best way to do this. I don't care if Mianxiao's defenses get lowered and CC is minutely stronger into Rillaboom, I believe. K 
Okay, yeah. There's the spiky shield, so I'm glad that I didn't burn um, my sash attacking into it. That's perfectly fine. That's breaking swipe range. Cool. And really boom goes down. Sweet. All right. All right. I don't think Roaring Moon is in range of a banded Sucker Punch from Urshifu. Remember when I said we shouldn't tear it too early? <laughs> um, banded, Sucker Punch, just 31 to 37. Oh, that's not a free Terra. Terra to 64 to 76. So yeah, it does KO. Hmm. But we have Quick Guard. So I think this is just a Quick Guard and a Acrobatics into the Ogre Pond. And Tauros can just take on the Urshifu itself, right? I think that's good. They Terrifier is smart. Overpun is an Aqua Jet range now. I'm thinking Urshifu's banded. And we're going to play as though it's banded until we see that it's not. Right? Okay, it's not banded. Oh, no, it is banded. It's definitely banded. <laughs> so this is just a quick guard and a CC. Oh, it's not banded. Okay, I lied. But that is game. Just quick guard and CC. Right. It's interesting that it doesn't tell me who it's targeting into, and good to know. All right, on to game two. All right, so the game plan worked, right? How do we want to mix it up? They never saw gold in the back, so gold is still a surprise potential. Gold didn't match up too well into what they did bring, though. So maybe we want Sylveon instead of gold. They didn't click fake out initially. So. Maybe we don't need Yen Shao lead. Maybe we don't need an ice spinner immediately. More so, right? Maybe it's Rotom in the back, actually, instead of Golden Go. Mm. No, I like Sylveon too much, I think. I think we do the same thing, but we keep Sylveon in the back instead of Gold. They let an Amorous this time. So I will be Ice Spinnering it. And I'm just going to immediately double into it, I think. I know Ice Spinner doesn't care. Well, no. Trading Fake Outs is always the safer play. Always, always, always. And I will set a Tailwind, I think. I don't want a breaking swipe in case it's contrary physical and it terrors here, right? I think it's better to just get damage off into an amorous. They protect, that's smart. Double protect, okay. I can work with that. If I said tailwind there though, whoo, we were in a really good spot. But here we are. So I think it's just an ice spinner into you and a terra flying acrobatics. Because this will let us live any... Oh, and they weren't faster than Miensha. Sweet. All 
All right, so now the question is, do they switch Rillaboom out to reset terrain? If they do, we're looking really good. Um, but I don't think they have anything that wants to take a break and swipe necessarily. Nothing I have in the back wants to take an electric move, so definitely double the Sandy Shocks. Question is, do I Breaking Swipe or do I Acrobatics? I think Acrobatics is slightly stronger into Sandy Shocks. I'm gonna double check that real quick. Nope, Breaking Swipe. No, 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 Acrobatics is slightly stronger. But I don't think it's enough that I care. So I think it is a breaking swipe to lower the Rillaboom's damage output. Oh, and it just barely missed out on the KO. That's unfortunate. It screens. Ooh. That's interesting. I would not have expected screens when I could have brought Raging Bull. But okay, okay, okay. But this is just a CC and a breaking swipe. Right? I don't see how that goes poorly. And I think this is a KO'd Ogre Pond. I don't think it lives this double up. Could be wrong. Oh, no, it reflects up. It definitely lives. What am I talking about? They do have priority now. So I do need to be mindful of that. Toros die to a grassy glide? I don't think it does. Uh, let's see. It's Ogre Pond, since they've been intimidated. It wasn't intimidated, it was breaking swipe, but. Grassy glide at neutral. Grassy terrain. And I have a defense drop. I do get KO'd. Okay. And they are likely faster. I don't. I think we saw that interaction, did we? Quick card, Aqua Jet. No, we didn't get to see that interaction. Okay. Well, I will just Aqua Jet into it. And I will attempt to set Tailwind. Oh, just short of the KO. That's unfortunate. What'd they go for? Ivy Cudgel, it makes sense. That is Aqua Jet range now, so they do need to commit a priority move to KO Tauros. We get our seed off with Sylveon. Hmm. I'm going to CC into Rillaboom, I think, because Hyper Voice should pick up the KO, and this covers them protecting Ogre Pond. Yep, there's a Spiky Shield. And there's the CC. All right, Sylveon, be strong. Oh, never mind. It just put itself into range. And since this is still single target, Hyper Voice is stronger. And my EVs are good. Yes. Sylveon. Let's go. GG's. Still undefeated after six battles now. So, And I'm about to do the seventh. <laughs> so excited for that. A really good match into my opponent. Uh, Namorous was scary. I honestly was really, really worried about that. Like, if it was physical and took a breaking swipe or my Intimidate, right? It could have steamrolled, I think. Same with Sandy Shocks. I feel like screen Sandy Shocks was a little bit of a waste. Um, Like, that could have been a really big problem with Life Orb or something. But, hey, they didn't bring it, so. Going on to week seven. Let's go. Thanks for watching, everybody. And um, do the YouTube things. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.